she's like, okay. She's like, well, why don't you write it, write it down? Write your story. Write why did you become a Muslim? Like, mm -hmm. just kind of put it down on paper. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, it's a good idea. Good mm -hmm. idea. It was good for me to kind of, you know, in order to come to terms with it a little bit, to, mm -hmm. you know, to write it down. So I did. And, and I, I sent it to her on email, and she's like, that was a great story. I'm starting this magazine called Aziza. Can I publish it? Uh, <laughs> and I was right. like, uh, okay. And then she told me, you know, I think that you should send this to your parents. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a way to kind of ease into telling them that you became a Muslim. Mm -hmm. And um, I had mixed reactions from my family. Mm -hmm. um, now, who was the first one you told from your family? Well, what I did is I chose kind of the people that I had the closest relationships with in my family, and I sent them the letter, or the kind of story, mm -hmm. with a letter, and a couple, like, informational books about Islam. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, what is it, kind of, you know, Islam 101 sort of booklets. Um, and uh, so basically it was like, I'm reaching out to them, and then they called me. Mm -hmm. So I don't remember, I remember my mom and my sister, they felt very hurt. Heard why? They felt like and people, and this is something that I hear very frequently from other people that convert to Islam, that um, ex becoming a Muslim is perceived by your family as you throwing out everything that, that they taught you. Mm -hmm. That you don't agree with anything they taught you, and that you don't believe in it, and you're just throwing all their teachings aside, which isn't the case. I mean, the reality is all those values that my family you know, instilled in me integrity, honesty. Um, those are things that are living, breathing in Islam, and they're just, they're just such an important part of Islam. So I, I felt like it just kind of, Islam just sort of like encompassed me. You know, mm -hmm. it wasn't like, okay, well, all of these good values. Well, I'm a Muslim now, so I have to put those aside. That's mm -hmm. not the case, right? right. So um, I ended up, you know, sort of having to def defend my decision mm -hmm. and. Um, I think that, you know there's a there's fear there because mm -hmm. people like you know with it, with anything if you don't know about it mm -hmm. there's fear associated with with it you know if I said that I became you know some other religion they never really heard about mm -hmm. and especially when they had so many bad stereotypes and negative press about mm -hmm. they're gonna just think what you know it's like I think that they maybe have had a, a similar reaction if I would have told them I became Mormon or something right, right? because mm -hmm. that, that also has a certain perception in the society so. Um, there was fear and didn't know what that meant. Mm -hmm. What does that mean that you become a, became a Muslim, you mm -hmm. know? And, um, you know, again, like feeling like I was rejecting mm -hmm. their teachings, rejecting the values they instilled in me. And um, I think that, you know, at one point someone, I don't, I don't want to say who, but some person in my family said that, oh, you're dead to us. Mm. That was very hurtful. Yes, of course it is. Because I just felt like, wait, <laughs> mm -hmm. that's not what Islam's about. Islam isn't like, oh, I'm a Muslim now, so my family, like, off with you, you know? Mm -hmm. That's just not the way Islam is. So um, my father called me, and he's like, you know, he has this kind of funny sense of humor. He's like, getting these packages in the mail for you, you know? <laughs> I was like, yeah, Dad. <laughs> my dad's different, though. I mean, he is very direct, and I, I'm kind of similar in that in that regard. You know, he right away, he's like, hey, well, I want to know about what's this, what's that, what's this, you know? Mm -hmm. and I was like, well, it's this, that, and then, oh, okay. People are going to think that you became Muslim because of these friends of yours. Well, I didn't become Muslim because of them. Mm -hmm. I became Muslim because I decided to become Muslim. Okay, you know. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in the beginning, there was some transition and, um, you know, I was the same old Mike Right. I think what, what was even harder than telling them I became Muslim was when I started wearing hijab. Mm -hmm. Because before, Americans, I think this is very, you know, common, mm -hmm. is that your belief is something inside and that no one knows. Like, if I'm walking on the street, 99% of the people, I have no idea what their belief is. Mm -hmm. Right. You could believe whatever. Who knows, mm -hmm. right? But when you start, you know, observing hijab, mm -hmm. then you're automatically identified as a Muslim from the outside. Mm -hmm. So something that they could just pretend didn't happen, mm -hmm. me converting, was now right there in front of them. Right. And but it's also something interesting. I think shortly after you began to wear hijab, the unfortunate incidents of 9/11 happened. Right. So now all and of I was those like, things oh, you no, mentioned I can't were just more. Uh, those things were more amplified now. Yeah, I mean, at first, um, I mean, there's a lot of apprehension just going outside. It just, you know, I had some friends that, you know, were accosted and you know yelled at in public and just spit at crazy stuff. I mean, mm -hmm. a lot that never happened to me. Mm -hmm. um, 
I mean, I did have people at work, like, you know, quizzing me, or, you know, as if I was some important political figure, and what do you think about 11, you know, I'm, uh. I, don't know I don't know anything. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I had friends that scary, scary stuff happened to them, so, um, you know, I was a little bit apprehensive, but I also, you know, maybe this is just part of my personality and my upbringing, it's like, I feel like I'm an American, and I'm going to do what I do. Mm-hmm. I have every right to be a Muslim, mm-hmm. you know, that's what freedom of religion is, mm-hmm. and by God, if anyone's going to do anything to me, you know, that's mm-hmm. sort of my feeling, you know, right. and... Um, even when I go running here at Green Lake and, you know, people say something. I mean, there's several times I've been running, people have yelled profanities at me. As a matter of fact, I'm quite interested in what do you wear when you run here in the park? Well, that's funny because a lot of people ask me that question. Mm-hmm. Um, so, one, I, I wear those kind of stretchy two-piece scarves. They're called Amiras. Mm-hmm. And one is like a cap and one is like a piece that goes over. They're like cottony, stretchy. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I always wear like long sleeve, usually men's clothing, unfortunately, but long sleeve t-shirt that's really long. And if it's not long enough, then I add like a piece of fabric to the bottom. Mm-hmm. And then I just wear like running pants. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I'm very picky about the shoes I wear because mm-hmm. it's very important when you're running. Right. Um, so just something that's, you know, breathable, loose, modest. After 9-11, mm-hmm. I think uh, you told us you started wearing hijab. I started wearing hijab before 9-11. Before 9-11, mm-hmm. shortly before 9-11. six 9/11. months before, yeah. Yeah, so what was that like? I mean, did it amplify the attention which was drawn to you? Well, I mean, I definitely, I mean, going, alhamdulillah, Seattle is a very progressive part of the country. Mm-hmm. Not only is it progressive, but it's not very, you know, segregated along racial lines. I mean, we don't have, like, a black neighborhood and a Hispanic neighborhood. And a, no, I mean, mm-hmm. people are just much more integrated here. So, um, and it's just very international. And so, I mean, alhamdulillah that I live here and not some other places that, you know, people notice foreigners and mm-hmm. everything. Um, but I definitely noticed people, you know, looking at me. And, you know, there are many instances where... Um, for example, I was at Nordstrom shopping and, um, you know, just minding my own business. And I mean, at first you, you really are like, you know, aware of your surroundings. I mean, I am, but still at that time you're just much more careful. And, you know, we, you know, some of us were, you know, always just going out with, just go with someone, never go alone anywhere because you just, we just didn't know what people were capable of, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, but there was one time I was shopping in Nordstrom and there was this, this older gentleman, you know, probably like my, my father's age, something like the time, like in his fifties or something. And I was shopping and he was just standing there with this like dead stare at me, just like he had seen an alien, quite frankly. <laughs> and his wife came up to him like this close and mm-hmm. looked at him and said, she's a person, you know, just yelled at mm-hmm. him. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh my God, he just got it right, right in the middle of the door from his wife. Mm-hmm. So you have, that's like shows the contrast. I mean, there are people here locally who just saw a Muslim and you know some wearing hijab and just were scared frightened what is that mm-hmm. and then there are the people like that man's wife who mm-hmm. were coming and defending us I mean right. <clears throat> I live next to Northgate mosque and there were neighbors there who stood 24 mm-hmm. 7 outside the mosque mm-hmm. and said you know we love our Muslim neighbors and you know don't come here don't because someone tried to burn down the Northgate mosque mm-hmm. You know, and tried to, and actually tried to shoot people coming out of the mosque. Mm-hmm. And after that, all the neighbors came, and there was a 24/7 watch. Um, I think it was called the like peace co some peace coalition or something. And they set up these 24/7 watches at s- uh, several local mosques and to guard the Muslims and guard the mosques. Mm-hmm. So. Um, and that's definitely because all they knew about Muslims up to that point was good. As yeah, neighbors. I mean, our neighbors, they, we were just peace-loving people going to the mosque and praying. And, mm-hmm. okay, once in a while, we probably parked too close to their driveways, which is annoying, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but besides that, you know, we were, people were just, you know, living their lives and being nice neighbors and, you know. But let me ask you one question, going back to the hijab, mm-hmm. something I heard a lot okay. after 9-11, that you would think a lot of women would try to remove the hijab to try to blend in. But it turned out the actual case was that women who are Muslim who didn't wear hijab started to wear yeah. it and uh, when people came to Islam at that time which were uh, a majority a of, the, lot of, people. of women immediately they wanted to adopt the hijab mm-hmm. during this turbulent time mm-hmm. so what do you think was behind that so many women